this is the part where I realized that making an all black dress might not be the most uh, visually interesting project one could pick. And also, if this uh, rat's nest of a microphone cord isn't a perfect metaphor for my life right now, I don't know what is. So I feel like it should come as no surprise that I love October, fall, Halloween, spooky season, what have you. I mean, so I'm extremely excited to be going to an amazing Halloween party this year, and it is themed as a haunted 1920s speakeasy party. So of course, I need a dress. But because this is me and the 20s, I mean, the 20s are fabulous, but I don't love them. <laughs> I don't love most 20s silhouettes on myself, um, but I really, really love the very early 20s. Um, so like very late 19 teens to very early 20s, about 1918 to 1922-ish. So the styles that are in my, you know, Downton Abbey um, fashion video. So I'm going to do a very, very early 1920s dress for this party. Not that anybody at the party will actually know that I'm fudging the date a little bit um, or that it's like just squeaking in there under the 1920s. But, you know, it's me. But you may have noticed that this video is already starting off a bit different from my other videos. And that's partly because this is a project that is not strictly historical. So it's not like my other projects to begin with that I've done here on the channel. And the other thing is that I noticed that when I watch YouTube videos, I actually really enjoy watching the more unscripted kind of casual, not quite vlogging, but you know, not quite as formal as the videos that I've been doing. And not that there's anything wrong with either type of those, but I just thought it would be fun to try something different. Now, don't worry if you absolutely hate this, I probably won't be doing many of these um, because I guess I sort of cling to my my scripted very well researched style but i thought it would be fun to try something different and this is also going to hopefully help me um, get through this entire process because at this point let's see it is 7 45 pm on tuesday and we get on the plane on thursday and the party is on saturday so basically I need to have the dress pretty much finished before I leave on Thursday, which means I have the rest of tonight, however long I want to stay up for, and then tomorrow night after work. So I think I can do it. It's not like it's a huge dress and it's not like I need complex undergarments for it or anything. So I, I think I can do it. Famous last words, right? But I've always felt I work better under pressure. Um, which has never helped my tendency to procrastinate, but that's just kind of how, <laughs> how I work. Um, which you may not have guessed from my previous videos that I'm actually a horrible procrastinator, but it is what it is. So the dress itself is inspired by a couple different um, images from the early 20s and kind of into the mid 20s, but I'm still gonna be keeping it that very early 1920s style where the waist isn't totally dropped yet. Still high enough to be flattering on my body type and um, you know gives me that definition that I'm looking for, but I also just really love the silhouette itself. So I was mostly inspired by this image and it's technically dated to 1916 um, from what I've read, which is perfect for me, but I also did still want to kind of bring it more into 1920 because even though it's a totally modern 1920s themed party, you know, I'm me, so I still have to try to do things to a certain degree historically accurate but I'm not gonna be using historically accurate materials for this dress. The thing I'm most excited about is the fabric that I found for the sort of cape aspect of it, which is the spider webs that are hanging off the arms. It is a flocked netting that has a huge spider web um, flocked onto it, and it's just so perfect. So when I found that, I knew this is absolutely the direction I'm going to go. And it was gonna be a lot less work than my original plan, which was to just get a sheer fabric and then 
create the spiderweb design on it. So this was absolutely perfect and I will link to the Etsy shop below that I got it from. The fabric for the main body of the gown is this sort of wrinkled, crinkled stretch velvet. We'll see how sewing with the stretch velvet goes. Obviously with all of my historical work, I don't sew with knits or stretch fabric a whole lot. Um, but since this isn't a super fitted dress, I'm not too worried about how that's gonna go. But again, we'll see. So that is my plan for the dress and I guess we'll get started. I decided to ease into the making of this dress by starting with the easiest, most mindless part of it, which was just cutting out the cape. I cut very carefully along the flocked velvet on the tool, and because it is tool, I don't have to worry about anything fraying, so I can just cut carefully along the edge here. And here's the cape all cut out. I cannot believe how cool this looks and how lucky I got finding this for this project. So last night I had every intention of doing way more <laughs> than I actually did. Um, pretty much as soon as I finished cutting out those spider webs, my battery died and with it, all of my motivation. So this is now a let's make a dress in one evening project, which I didn't expect it to be, but I also didn't expect to be doing any of this at the last minute. Um, so this will be, this will be fun. Even though I'm not making this dress to be historically accurate, I am still going to take inspiration from the way that evening gowns from this period, the late 19 teens and early 1920s were constructed. Typically, this means a fitted or semi-fitted underbodice with a pretty thick waistband usually made from grain, that the bodice and then skirt are actually mounted onto. So that's how you get those really drapey, organic looking bodices, but they actually have structure underneath them. Instead of doing a whole under bodice and the grow grain waistband, I'm gonna be using this super wide um, elastic that I found at Joann's. So this is going to be the base that I build the bodice and the skirt on. I'll stitch them onto here and then it'll be stretchy so it's nice and extra comfy. I don't plan on wearing my 19 teens corset or full undergarments with this because again, it is technically a modern Halloween party. Um, but I think this is kind of like a good, um, balance between the two. I don't have a pattern that I'm gonna work from for this either. I'm just gonna kind of go for it, um, which may turn out badly, but um, I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. First step was to cut the elastic to fit my waist to form the base of the dress. Instead of hemming the edges of the elastic, I decided to use an old ballet trick and burn the edges of the elastic. I feel like I should put some kind of advisory here to um, only do this with adult supervision. If you thought that I, as a professional dress historian and maker of historical clothing, had some kind of amazing cutting board, you would be wrong. I do almost all of my cutting on the floor like this. So for the bodice, I'm essentially just cutting four large triangles that are going to overlap at the front, back, and sides to create the bodice. So it probably still doesn't look like much, but I've just been playing and pinning and cutting away stuff and I finally got it to where I want it. And wow, washing machine sounds like it's gonna blow up. But again, this is still very early stages because it is going to have a sash that goes around. Um, and then these straps will actually be velvet ribbon. Um, they'll get cut off right where my microphone is and gathered and attached to the velvet ribbon. And I also decided that inspired by burning the ends of the elastic, I think I'm actually just gonna burn the edges of the fabric because it does this really cool wrinkly thing um, and then I don't have to hem them. So yeah, wow, I never thought I would be taking this many shortcuts, but I actually think it looks really cool and kind of adds to the sort of like, I don't know, spooky etherealness to the whole outfit, so. Once again, please be very, very careful when doing this. 
Here's how the edge of the fabric looks after it's been burned. You can see that just a tiny bit of the edge of the fabric has melted to finish off the fabric so that it won't fray. And I think it looks pretty cool. So I probably should just continue on with the bodice that I started, but the skirt is sort of haunting me because I don't exactly know what, um, what I'm gonna do. Uh, because I really think that skirts like these in this style of evening dress um, really just need to be draped and played around with. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have the um, inner support waistband pinned on and I'm just gonna start pinning the skirt to it and kind of playing around and draping it. Um, this 1919 pattern is kind of my main inspiration for sort of how I want it to look. I think I'm gonna have the bodice and this waistband and the skirt and everything closed in the back because that is um, most typical for construction during this period. I don't know, maybe I'll just have it open in the front. It wouldn't be the most typical, but this also is not a historically accurate dress and I keep having to remind myself that. So, all right, let's just do it. I really wish I had something more helpful to say about how I draped this skirt, but basically I just took a large rectangular piece of the fabric and started pinning and draping and folding the fabric around the waistband. I realize this is probably really hard to see because of the whole black on black thing, but yeah, I'm really happy with that. I just sort of went for it and started with my inspiration image and then added the little um, flap on the other hip which is something that you see in a lot of original uh, designs from this time period. It's a feature that I really like, so I'm glad I got to incorporate it, and it helped me use up some of the excess fabric that came from gathering up the other side of the dress. Now that the skirt is where I want it, I'm going to stitch it to the waistband, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this while it's still on the dress form. Um, just so everything kind of stays in place where it is. And I'll just have to be careful to put my hand through here so I can stitch through all the layers. And I'm just leaving the raw edge on the outside of the waistband because this is all gonna get covered up um, with a sash on the outside. So here are the top and bottom kind of thrown together since I got the skirt attached to the waistband. And I just have the bodice kind of pinned to the velvet ribbon straps here and it's just tucked into the waistband which it'll actually be attached on the outside the way that the skirt is and then it'll be covered up with a ruched sort of sash here but this kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like now although again all black at you know 9 10 p.m uh doesn't show up too well so i apologize for that but um yeah i really i'm really liking how this looks so what I need to do now is kind of tack the overlap parts of the bodice and then put it on again, but with the bodice on the outside of the waistband and then kind of pin it in place so that I can actually stitch it the way that I did with the skirt. I need to attach the ribbon straps here and then I need to make the sash and then the dress itself will be done. Oh, I have to do deal with closures, which are gonna be here on the side. And then, my favorite part that I'm most excited about um, will be attaching the cape here. So, yeah. Time to do a little bit of hand sewing and then I'll check in again. I'm realizing that I'm kind of terrible at this vlogging thing. Um, I think mostly because I'm very self-conscious uh, especially about how I look on camera. So there's a lot more that I filmed and is not going to make it into this. So I will just catch you up on what I did. It was really a lot of hand sewing, like putting the, um, the, vel the velvet straps on. So now we have these narrow velvet ribbon straps that the bodice is attached to. And then the bodice is now also attached to the waistband. And so both pieces, the skirt and the bodice, are just basically gathered and then stitched to the, um, this wide elastic here. So the other things that I have to do for the dress, like stitching on the closures and putting the elastic bands on the spiderweb cape and attaching the cape to the dress, I think that's all going to be um, airplane and probably hotel sewing because it is just gonna be really easy hand sewing type stuff. 
So I think the next time that I see you, I will be getting ready hair and makeup and then putting this on for the final reveal at the party. So I will see you then. Even though this is very different from what I usually make, I had so much fun putting it together and especially wearing it at our haunted speakeasy party in none other than Salem, Massachusetts. I hope you enjoyed this slight detour from my usual content and I promise I will be back with another history heavy video very soon. See you then.